The Minnesota Twins have won a game at home. Let's talk about it on the postcast. You are Locked On Twins Postcast, part of Locked On Minnesota on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up? Welcome to the Locked On Twins Postcast on Locked On Sports Minnesota. My name's Sam Ekstrom, pinch hitting for Luke Inman, who will be on Locked On Wolves Postcast duty later tonight. He was on it last night as well and sandwiched in there, this little Twins matinee. So I'll take the reins today from Luke. And I'm uh, welcoming in C.J. Baumgartner of ZoneCoverage.com, our Twins expert for the day, to talk about a 3-2 Twins win over the Dodgers. C.J. feels good to get a W again. I mean, it a first home win of the year, so that always helps. But, man, it felt like one more loss and things might have already kind of felt like they were spiraling for the fan base. Obviously, still a four and six start, not exactly what you want. But this was a big win just in kind of slowing down the – it felt like the mm. the momentum that this team was really losing. So it was a big deal for them to get back out, get this win, salvage the series, and now they kind of can move on and play some AL Central teams again. Yeah, 10 games in, four and six, and a, a couple big getaway day wins this season so far. Like things were getting a little sloppy on the road trip, then they they beat Milwaukee before coming home. And then the homestand was abysmal until today, where the Twins can get away to Detroit for a four game series with some good vibes, 3 2. And in those two games in particular that I referenced, CJ, you know, the, the afternoon win against Milwaukee and then the one today, it's the bullpen. I mean, the bullpen is the one getting the job done. You get, and I think they were both paddock starts too. You get an average start from your fifth starter and the bullpen flexes its muscle and dominates a good Dodgers lineup today. Uh, and a save for Steven Okert after Griffin Jacks fans the side in the eighth. Um, everybody uh, pulled their weight in the bullpen and the defense was Sterling today as well. Um, we'll also get to Edward Julian's big day, but let's start with the bullpen, CJ. They got to be the, like the number one uh, star collectively of this one. Yeah, I mean, as they've been in pretty much every game so far this season for the Twins, there was a lot of uh, consternation about when they lost to Ron and Topa and Theobar not all starting the season uh, with the team. But this unit has proven that they're deep, even though they've lost a few guys here and there to injuries. But the guys that they throw out there have all been effective and it doesn't feel like with anybody in this bullpen, when they come out on the mound, you're waiting for things to go wrong. And I know Emilio Pagan is a name that, you know, is very hot or cold for some fans, but anytime he came in there, anytime a couple other pitchers, even Alcala last year, the last couple of years, you come in, you expect something to maybe go haywire and nothing has quite happened yet. And for a Twins team that's gotten some good starts, but not a ton of lengthy starts like they did mm -hmm. a year ago, the bullpen has been asked to do more and they've still been very effective. So, uh, and then especially once you can eventually put back in Duran, Theobar, Topa, some of those guys who were expected to pitch high leverage innings. I don't think when the Twins had, I don't think when Rocco had it drawn up that he was going to have Oker come in for a save situation in the second week of the season uh, back in mid-March, but that's where things are right now. And uh, the Twins bullpen has definitely saved this season so far. Yeah, um, Griffin Jack's excellent. Brock Stewart, excellent. Um, Funderburg gets a moment today. And then Okert in the ninth. Um, check out these AL Central bullpen numbers. Coming into today, Cleveland, number one in the league at 1.47. Detroit basically tied with them, 1.47 as well. Minnesota, third in bullpen ERA, 1.51. And that gets better today with four and a third scoreless innings after Paddock gets two outs into the fifth. And then the bullpen shuts them out the rest of the way. I, I'd say biggest play of this game, CJ, it's got to be the relay from Kirilov to Correa to Vasquez to get Otani at the plate. And you love that it's Otani. It just feels like it carries a little more weight to nab him at home plate and preserve the, the one run lead. Uh, that's your number one highlight, I would say. Yeah, that'd have to be because, of course, that. Could have tied the game up late, and if the Dodgers tied up and the Twins, the longer that game goes on, you feel like things would just slip away from them. But that big play, and Kirilov had that ball kind of eat him up a little bit. It took a weird bounce in the corner uh, in right field, but he got a strong throw into Correa. And I think I say this at least once a game on Twitter or X or whatever is uh, Carlos Correa is really, really good at baseball. And he shows that play in and play out. And the Twins have never seen a shortstop like this guy 
throws a strike to Vasquez. Vasquez, who had a good defensive game in his own part, throwing out at least one runner uh, throughout the course of the ball game and putting a perfect tag, getting that glove right in front of home plate so Otani had no choice but to slide feet first into the glove, and it made it really, really easy for the replay crew to overturn that call, and that was a big one. Uh, just overall, good defense for the Twins, and it's uh, it's really, really uh, fun. It's really pleasing for a lot of baseball fans when you just see a throw from the outfield get relayed and back in. It's uh, just a very good sequence. Yeah, this is a quality baseball game that, that was played today. Uh, you had good pitching, great defense, played in two and a half hours. Um, you like you know, you know, guys on base both ways, pitchers had to work out of trouble, and and I thought it was a really crisp game. And I think fans got a beautiful day to go watch it at Target Field. I also earmarked uh, Vasquez throws another dime to second base, and that's his third throw out, uh, you know, caught steal of the year. Perfect throw where he kind of throws it toward their back leg, and then Correa catches the ball and is perfectly applied to get, I want to say, Outman out at second base in that case. Um, he's been terrific defensively all year. Great arm, and obviously had the great tag on Otani. Um, and I also earmarked the Margot catch in left field, the bailout paddock, a leaping catch at the track on a line drive. Uh, twins were were superb really all around today. Yeah, and that one with Margot in left field, that one, it seems easy when you watch it, but 104 miles an hour off the bat, it's one of those that kind of feels like it keeps rising as it drives, and Margot had a great read on it and was able to make that catch. And like you said, uh, just overall, it's just a really good uh, defensive unit. I know, obviously, you like to have Royce Lewis at third base, and that kind of messes some things around. But overall, Julian's taking a big step in defense. Carlos Santana first base is a good defenseman so i mean overall the uh the twins are just in such a, a good spot right now with the defense and with that outfield i know martin played in terms of buxton today but even kirilov filling in right field for walner when that ball uh we talk go back to the relay when i saw kirilov field that ball i kind of forgot for a second and thought it was walner and when that throw came in i was like oh nice throw and then i forgot that that was kirilov making that mm -hmm. play and kirilov spent a lot of the last couple of years playing first base so overall, you know, the Twins don't have this very, very high ceiling, I would say, defensively. But overall, their floor is really, really good. And like you talked about, it helped them win this game today. Twins move to four and six with the win. We're glad you're watching us here in the Locked On Twins postcast. He's CJ Baumgartner. I'm Sam Ekstrom. Uh, of course, we're going to get to the Edward Julian multi-homer day. He was the offensive hero for the Twins and... A major streak is ended by Byron Buxton. We'll tell you more about that as we carry on the Locked on Twins postcast. Brought to you today by Prize Picks, number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. Easiest and most exciting way to get into the action. I'm telling you, you pick more or less than two or more player stats and uh, stats and watch the winnings roll in. With spring training over, baseball season is officially underway. Ten games in for the Twins. Don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your prize picks entry. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, first inning runs, take your pick, more or less, Add them to your prize picks entry today. Get in the uh, playoff action as well. NBA and NHL starting up. Win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during the NBA postseason. Playoffs begin April 20th. Play-in round April 16th, 17th, and 19th. Make sure to check that out. You can do cross-sport entries on prize picks as well, and they have injury insurance. It's the best daily fantasy sports App. Download it today. Use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's one word locked on MLB when you download the Prize Picks app for a first deposit match up to $100. Wanted to circle back, CJ, too, on one uh, Brock Stewart note I had written down before we get too far away from him. Um, he, his uh, his ERA gets preserved at zero, and I love regurgitating this stat. He has allowed runs, or run, singular, I guess, in one Twins appearance in his Twins career. 33 appearances, one time he's allowed a run or more, and that was May 29th of last year. He is still perfect this year with a nothing ERA in five appearances. Uh, let's Let's move to the offense. The streak is over. At long last, the Twins have a, a hit 
with a runner in scoring position, 0 for 33 before Byron Buxton breaks the ice um, in this game. It was ugly, CJ. This whole homestand has been abysmal. All season, it's been abysmal. And Buxton, to some extent, gets the team off the schneid with a big knock today. Yeah, uh, that that streak is just ridiculous. I mean, that's so long. How does that happen? Uh, the Twins did, it, it kind of felt like in, term, in football terms, like a team constantly would get in the red zone and they just would never score. And it's like, do you give them credit for getting into the red zone or do you just keep hounding on them for not scoring? And that's what it was like for the Twins. They would constantly get guys in scoring position, 33 opportunities. And it felt like the Twins throughout this streak would do a good job of getting ducks on the pond, getting runners in that spot. But that big hit, just would elude them. And it was like that in the first half of 2023. And we've kind of seen that repeat so far. Uh, I also saw, uh, I think Aaron Gleam put this on Twitter, that uh, Buxton is four of 10 this year with runners in scoring position. So right guy for the job in this spot, able to knock that through. But man, I, that just needed to be done. And maybe now that you got that first one over, things kind of get better. But I think the Twins have constantly been putting themselves in a good spot. It was only a matter of time before somebody was going to break that. And let's not pat the Twins on the head too much. They went one for nine today with runners <laughs> right. in scoring position. They, they, I believe, in the inning before Buxton broke the streak, they had first and second, nobody out, and they had three feeble at-bats. Um, the Twins conjured today, for them, an impressive total of six hits. Um, I'm not sure how many they had combined in the series coming in to this one, but it was, it was not many. Um, they might have equaled or exceeded their previous total. Um, they get two home runs from Edward Julian, who has been one of the scufflers in this lineup so far, uh, goes Homer single Homer today. Oppo as well with those home runs showing the power that we saw last year from him. This was the type of Julian game we want to see more of. Yeah, exactly. And you talk about hitting the ball the other way over the fence. It feels like that wall scraper, maybe one, two rows into the bleacher seats just over the flowers has been kind of that trademark Ed Julian home run at Target Field, uh, even throughout last season. And that's where some runs have been in the early part of this year. Uh, it was a really big deal for Julian. I know some people are iffy on his power. Some people are higher than others. But uh, Julian, when he can just hit that ball the other way and flick it over the fence, it helps things out a lot. And especially he's been a slow to get going this season as of a lot of uh, people in the twins lineup. So for him to have a multi Homer game definitely helps out. And the twins needed every uh, single home run winning three, two, but hopefully that gets things in the right direction for Julian. Cause he is a good hitter. He's been having a tough time with the strike zone, uh, taking a lot of pitches that it feels like he just needs to either protect the plate or just be more aggressive in hitting his pitch, whatever it is. Uh, it's good for Julian to take advantage of those pitches that get thrown over the plate and making pitchers pay. And when he does that, he's one of the better hitters in baseball. Yeah, he had one hit in seven games coming into today, gets three today. Um, you know, it's easy to overreact to 10 game sample sizes. That's what the Twins have in front of them right now. Um, remember last year, Julian. His bread and butter was working counts. He just got in so many favorable counts. I would have to, to dig into more data to find out exactly like whether he's getting as deep in the counts this year or, or pitchers are approaching him differently. But that's always the risk about you know the so-called sophomore slump is that uh, there's a full off, ski, uh, off season to put together scouting reports. Uh, there's more data uh, how to pitch Julian. He is still relatively strikeout prone. He just doesn't chase. Um you know, this could be one of those side effects of going into your second year, you know, first full, full, uh, first full year in the league. These kind of things happen. Uh, it's kind of happening with Walner as well early in the year that there are inevitably going to be some struggles. And hopefully the twins pitching or, uh, you know, hitting staff can can help these guys work their way out of it. Yeah. And you, know, you mentioned with Julian, the strikeouts, he doesn't chase a lot, but he will take a lot of them looking. And it's that being passive versus being a good eye at the plate and, you know, uh, having to deal with, obviously on Saturday, there was a lot of just bad umpiring, but uh, overall it's Ken Julian. That's that next level of his game is Kenny take his good eye at the plate and figure out a way to keep drawing walks. Cause sometimes to Julian, that's a ball. And that probably is, but to the umpire, it's a strike. And how can he fight off that pitch. And there was even a couple times where it felt like he took pitches 
because he just felt like he wasn't going to get a strike on that one. And then they would sneak a ball uh, over the outer half of the plate. Normally one that Julian could hit into the bleachers and he's just not able to do that. And it's like he talked about Sam, just taking that next level uh, of the game. Teams are making their counter punches against Julian and Walner. And it's just about how quickly can those guys make the counter punch again? Reese points out in the chat, um, they leave Julian in against a lefty in the fifth inning, Alex Vesia, and he goes yard. And it feels like Rocco's been fairly quick to make those moves early in games. It's like it's gotten earlier and earlier every year where, where he'll he'll pull a guy after two at-bats and pretty readily didn't do that in this case. What do you think of the Rocco decision to stick with Julian? Maybe just rolling with the hot hand? Yeah, I mean, that could certainly be the case. The fact that he got the home run earlier, uh, I believe he had a home run I can't, uh, in yesterday's ball game as well. Uh, so I can't, uh, He's he is having the hot hand. I also wonder, and I don't have this in front of me, uh, because they already had Margot out there. They had Martin in the lineup. Buxton was DHing. You know, maybe you pinch hit Jeffers in that spot. But I wonder if it's just there wasn't a ton of righties at the disposal to go with. And he just kind of was like, all right, you've earned the hot you're the hot hand. You've earned the opportunity. There's not really anybody who has that more favorable matchup. Go on and get your chance. And he took advantage of it. And if he does want to get that opportunity more often than not, he's got to take advantage of the opportunities he's been given. He did in that spot. And yeah, it makes Rocco uh, look pretty good today. Yeah. And maybe didn't want to burn a catcher by using Jeffers in that spot. Like you mentioned, like, I guess, I guess it all does add up and, and rewarded for the decision. So a feather in Rocco's cap and he pulls the right moves in the bullpen today as well. Uh, give me a Rocco grade, A, B, C, D, or F today. Uh, I'm going to give it uh, a good B plus. I think I'm going to give it everything uh, working right uh, for uh, Baldelli. I think overall, uh, you know, with the way that this bullpen has worked, there was a kind of a situation of who takes that closer role. Who is the guy that replaces Duran? And is it Jax? Is it Stewart? Is it whoever? And it really has been a bullpen by committee. And that's something I kind of thought the twins would do because they did it in Duran's rookie year, even when they had him is just because he was their best reliever. doesn't always mean they gave him the ninth inning or the eighth inning. Sometimes it was just what is the most advantageous. And that's why you saw uh, Stewart come through in the seventh inning. It's why Jax came in through the eighth. And I think Rocco just not feeling the need to have a closer, not feeling the need that he has to use Stewart in the ninth inning only. I think that just opened up the arsenal. And that means that you can attack some of your better relievers against the heart of the order and then figure things out as the game goes along. So I think, like you talked about, Rocco pushed all the right buttons in the bullpen and it's a good grade today. Yeah, it, it's modern managing at its pinnacle when you you address the most pressing need when you're facing it. So if you've got the heart of the order and Griffin Jacks is is available, you're going to use him. And if it's Duran, you probably would have used Duran in that spot. Um, it'd be nice when they have both of them and Theo Barr. That bullpen is only going to get better. And I think that as long as the bullpen's pitching this well, I think you're going to see him very content pulling his starters in the fifth. Like he said the other night, he doesn't care about pitch count. You know, once he gets to about the fifth inning, third time through the order, he's just playing situations mm -hmm. at that point. So unless it's Pablo Lopez on a heater, uh, we're going to see this bullpen used a lot this year. And it seems like a bullpen that can actually hold up with a, a lot of good depth that it's demonstrating right now. When we return, we'll kind of take a wide angle lens, look at the first 10 games and preview the Tigers series next on the Locked On Twins postcast. It's presented today by eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. 
Final segment, Locked on Twins postcast. Back tomorrow, myself and Luke Inman will be breaking down the Twins-Tigers matinee to start a four-game series. Like you said earlier, CJ, AL Central play will we'll get going a little bit more. Twins have already you know, dropped a couple to the Guardians, had one postponed. Um, but a Tigers team that is quite good or has conducted itself quite well to start the year, a team that's been, I think, on the ascension path the past couple couple of seasons. What's your read from afar? I you probably haven't watched them too closely as of yet, but kind of your your read on Detroit early this season, contender or pretender? Well, for now, uh, I think be, just because they haven't quite done it yet and it's still early in the season, I'm going to say pretender, but it's not that I think that they can't do it. It's more of like, I, I actually need to see them do it before I'm officially going to say that the Tigers are a team to watch out for. Now they've done everything that they needed to do early in the season by getting out to a good start and showing everybody that they're ready to go. But I think overall Detroit just has so many prospects and their farm systems in a good spot, but they've had so many top picks, whether it's Casey Mize or Spencer Torkelson or whoever, that they're a team that at some point is just going to need to start winning ball games. Otherwise you end up like the White Sox and having to completely reset everything. I think the Tigers are a good team. AJ Hinch is a good manager, whether they can kind of take that next step and be a consistent playoff team. Cause they've shown flashes over the last few years that they can be legitimate, but then they've also had really cold stretches that have kind of brought them and weighed them down from that. Uh, overall, I think the twins still should go in and they should still be expected to win the series against the Tigers. But the Tigers are definitely going to be a lot more feisty than they have been the last couple of years. And keep in mind, I believe they won the season series against the Twins mm-hmm. a year ago. I will point this out regarding Detroit. They started 6-1, and one, and all seven of those games were decided either by one run or in extra innings. Mm-hmm. So they had pretty tremendous close game luck. You know, we talked about regression to the mean. I think that that we're already seeing a little regression for Detroit. They've lost three of four, including two to the the woeful Oakland A's. So they might be coming back to the pack a little bit. Uh, that's a matinee Thursday, night game Friday, afternoon, Saturday, and Sunday for that four-game Tigers series. And the Twins will face old friend Kent Maeda in the Friday game. Uh, they get Pablo on the bump tomorrow for the Twins, hopefully trying to string a couple wins together. Uh, The Twins snap a four-game losing streak today. They're 10 games into the year, CJ. Um, What's what's your panic meter at? I mean, if if 10 is, you know, pets' heads are falling off, one, you're calm, relaxed, confident. Where are you at panic-wise with this, uh, this kind of uneven start for the Twins? I'd say I'm somewhere around a six because it's not just judging these 10 games in a vacuum. It's kind of judging uh, what these 10 games were plus the first half of last season, because a lot of these issues with the offense were the same things we saw in the first half of last season. And the Twins were benefited by the Tigers and the Guardians and the Royals and the White Sox not being very good in the first half of 2023. And it kind of allowed the Twins time to figure things out. And they still were able to win the division easily with 89 wins. Now, the slower start this year And now those other teams in Cleveland and Detroit, even Kansas City having better starts to the season, it just puts that pressure on a little bit more Uh, overall. I don't want to overreact, but it definitely, you can't win the division. You can't have a playoff season in April, but you can sure get things off the rails quickly. And Mm -hmm. they just need to win a few more games and hang around 500 through the first month of the season before I'm really going to panic. But it's not the most ideal start for them. Yeah, yeah, and I don't like to overly panic either. I mean, we saw this team frustrate us to no end last year until, what, late August? They kind of started to come around and become a real team, so it can take four months. And if you hover around 500 in this division, you're probably going to be in the mix down the stretch. We think Cleveland might be legit. I'm not sure yet about them, but they might be the real deal. Well, obviously, the bullpen that I talked about earlier for Detroit has been great. Cleveland bullpen has been great. Twins bullpen has been great. So maybe some low scoring games in the central this year. Um, I I'm probably about a three and a half, uh, you know, Aaron Gleeman laid out very well at the athletic about how he contextualized the slow start offensively, but also laid it out relative to other seasons where they started slowly, but then came alive. Like last year, they had a very, very, very slow start offensively. Um, 
and they did the year before as well. And, you know, both of those seasons, they ended up being pretty above average offensive ball club. So not a great April hitting twins team that, that uh, Falvey and Levine have constructed to be sure. But um, I think 10 games, that's like one NFL game. This is week one. Right. Week one is in the books um, in a football season. And uh, yeah, you could call it a loss. Vikings just dropped 0 one. Okay. All right, let's go get him next week. We'll see if the Twins can uh, even things out in the so-called week two, this upcoming stretch of games for Minnesota, where uh, they they start off with four against Detroit. And uh, after that, who they have after Detroit on this road trip? Do you know off the top of your head? I, I, I right want to say it's the White Sox that are coming okay. in. Uh, so it's but a yeah, central road that. trip. Yeah, it's a lot of games against the AL Central uh, throughout this next part of the month, which it, month, which is a good chance for the Twins to start to get things back on track, especially mm-hmm. if they end up playing the Southsiders in that one because they are just legitimately not trying to win baseball games right no, now. No, you're right about that. And 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 again, to kind of take the Tigers down a peg, three of their wins were against Chicago by a single run. So um, it's easy to inflate your record early in the year if you draw the right schedule. Um, and quick correction, it's at Detroit, then it's at Baltimore. Yeah, that's a little and tougher. Then, and at Baltimore, a little tougher, but they do have two series coming up before the month is over against Chicago. So you were right about that. More central opponents coming up. Um, and CJ will be uh, with us for a lot of those games on the Locked On Twins postcast. Luke Inman uh, will be back in the saddle hosting these shows. I'll be joining him tomorrow after the Twins Tigers opener. But CJ, good work. Find his stuff at zonecoverage.com. I'm Sam Ekstrom. Find me on X at Sam Ekstrom. Find CJ at BaumCJ30. But Dan and now Baum. Um, I like that. I just like like saying Baum. Uh, that's the Locked on Twins postcast for the day. Thanks a lot for watching. Talk to you tomorrow.